Good morning and happy Tuesday. It is 5.50 and I'm running out the door to head to my first 24 hour shift in the hospital. So let's go. I just stepped out of surgery to go to a meeting with the rotation correction director. He's meeting with all students, but I'm now going back to surgery, back to the OR. Oh my God, I just dropped my mask. I almost fell, but we got it. This lighting is awful. We are doing a lobectomy on someone's lung because unfortunately they have lung cancer. So we are taking out the cancer today and hopefully helping to cure them along with their other oncology treatments. We have another surgery after that involving a JG tube, which is a genum gastric tube, I believe. But I need to go back to the OR. It's a lot harder to vlog here than the other hospital because Temple is like huge and there's honestly, I think two million people work in this building. Like there's always 10 people in every single hallway, which is why we are vlogging in the bathroom. So, excuse that, but only option. There is chocolate leaking in my pocket. There's chocolate all in that pocket. Suck my hand in chocolate. Incredible. Sensational. <laughs> it is 2.30. I just grabbed some lunch and I am running to go eat it before the next surgery. I am so hot and so hungry. But, you know, we're doing okay. I'm so out of breath. The um, incoming M1s, I guess they are M1s now, at Temple, are doing like transition to medical school, like orientation this weekend. I'm like so excited for them. So if you happen to be watching this and you are an incoming or new M1 at Temple, welcome. Oh, there was a, some drama with this surgery. I think I'm gonna explain it later because I'm so out of breath. It's like a little concerning. The asthma is asthmaing. But I just wanted to say that real fear is being in a totally different building than your medical team and being afraid that they're gonna text you that the OR is ready. But listen, like I need a break. Like I need to eat. And they told me to eat. So I'm gonna scarf down my food and then we're gonna go to the last surgery that apparently is gonna be very rough. Oh, that's great. I got the text. I sat here for 15 minutes. What is that? Oh my god. To the OR I go! Hello, I am joining you from the on-call room. There are a couple in the basement. Basement. It's kind of creepy down here, not gonna lie. It's currently 9.30ish and I stepped away from my team to grab coffee and my overnight bag was in my car because I didn't know like where I'd be sleeping. So I just left it in there to get like later. So I had to run out and get it because it's like dark and we are in the middle of the city. <sighs> yeah. I'm irritated at the moment, I'm not gonna lie to you. I was not told any information about this night until it was happening, and I have not had any breaks since 2 p.m. when I ate lunch, aside from me like going to my car just now, because I had to. And I just didn't prepare for this because I wasn't aware what this would be like. So anyways, I didn't even know where these rooms were. Didn't know where they were. Like it's just been like disaster after disaster. Then there was an issue with Vaco. I'm just gonna complain, sorry, for like 30 more seconds and I'll stop. I vowed as a cat mom to never have him have to like be overnight by himself. I just like, if that's what works for you, that's fine. For me, I just didn't wanna do that with him because like we're so close and he's like, not clingy, but like, I don't know, we're like kind of a little codependent with each other. And I didn't really process until like the end of last week maybe that me being overnight at the hospital meant I wouldn't be home overnight. Like I didn't really process that. And then I was like, oh my God, what does that mean for Vaco? So I had an extra key made of my apartment, gave it to my boyfriend so he could go like spend some time with Vaco tonight, feed him dinner, whatever. 
He goes to try the key, the key doesn't work. So I need a refund, thanks, lock key or whatever it's called. And then it was like, okay, how is Vaka gonna be fed? Because I can't leave. It's been resolved. My mom had to drive and like give A the key and then A went to my apartment and like hung out with him for a couple hours. But that was striking me because I'm like, okay, my kid can't go like 24 hours without food. So anyways, we're gonna woosa. I have coffee. Let me just tell you, I really thought I was gonna like be here, say bye to my resident at like six ish, and then just literally chill in this bed and get some takeout, like study, and like maybe overnight something would happen. But I was like, there's not gonna be like a thoracic emergency overnight. And then I was gonna wake up and at 6 a.m. I was gonna go home. That's what I thought was gonna happen. No. I was not told that apparently there's something called a night float. We have three. There's like an intern night float. I think like a third year resident night float and then like a fifth year resident night float and all the surgical specialties almost all of them come and do sign off or sign out where they tell these three people these three residents about all their patients on the list and then they go home and then these residents they start work at 6 p.m they only have to work a 12-hour shift don't know what's up with that why i'm working 24 so they receive all these patients like let's just say like 60-ish patients and they take care of all of them overnight. Now, some patients don't need anything to happen, but if several of them have issues, like that's these three people's job. So I thought it was like, because I'm on thoracic surgery, I thought I was only going to be doing thoracic surgery patients overnight, but I'm doing all the surgical specialty patients overnight. Except trauma. However, the trauma team was in the OR like an hour ago and a trauma came in and we had to take care of it because no one else was here. The person was, I think like jumped and beat up. It was like very sad and they had broken ribs and stuff, like so sad. Nothing life-threatening luckily. So I'm sure they'll make a full recovery, but yeah. And then there was another person in the ER, like things just started happening immediately. I was dropped off to like this team straight from the OR, no break, as I already said, no food, no dinner. What is dinner? I don't know. Tonight's dinner I think will be pretzel m and I need to get back to the team because it's been a minute because I was running around. I walked all the way to my car and then realized I didn't have my keys on me. It's just been crazy, but we're gonna be positive. We're gonna be positive. I feel better just like sitting here collecting myself in this little room. And then we're just gonna go vibe. They said maybe like if nothing's happening around midnight, they'll send us to bed. And then if something happens, I guess like we'll be woken up. No one has my number. So I don't even know how I'm going to find the team if they're not in the ER anymore. Don't know where they where they are, how to find them, but we're vibing. We're vibing. This is my little room, by the way. There's two computers and then bunk beds. I believe I'm gonna be the only one in here, hopefully. There's like four of these rooms down here and like littered with my stuff. Some lockers and some hooks. So let's go back to the team. Hello, it is one, is it 1.30? Wait, what time is it? It's 1.50. I'm so tired. I've never been this tired in my life. Oh, I can finally take this off. I, at one point, lost my vision partially because my brain was not working, not functioning anymore. The residents told me to go to sleep. So that's what I'll be doing. And I can't wait to go to sleep. And then I will wake up right before six and I should be able to go home. I can't wait to go home. I survived my first 24 hour shift. Woo! I look like trash, but I don't feel like trash. But we'll talk later once I'm safe at home. I am going to end this vlog in bed. I feel like that's very suitable for the vlog. I came home, gave Vako like the longest, biggest bear hug ever missed him incredibly so much i don't even know if that makes sense and showered immediately of 
course. And now I'm cozy in bed and brush my teeth. I think one thing that I'll say that I've learned from this experience, aside from the things that I've already discussed, like packing wise, is I packed my toothbrush, like something to wash my face, and like face lotion. I packed clothes to change into from when I left the hospital and my baby wipes, that is essential for me. Snacks, my snuggie to sleep with, laptop, iPad, laptop charger, phone charger, slides. Those are already in my bag, I just left them there. Maybe even a couple other things. I'm gonna be honest with you, I didn't brush my teeth or wash my face. Like, and when someone who I know that's like a surgery resident told me, I was like, do you brush your teeth and like change into pajamas? And they were like, no, you don't do that stuff. And I was like, gross. But no, like you don't do that stuff. <laughs> You don't, I mean, I think if you have like a really slow night, maybe you'll have the chance and the strength, but honey, please come to bed. I really just like flopped into the mattress. Um, so anyways, I just wanted to talk about the last surgery before I close the vlog out. So I don't really remember what the last thing I said was before going into the surgery, but basically, I had to run around, get the stuff from my car and all of that stuff. And then when I reconnected with my team, they were setting up in the OR because there was someone who had a duodenal perforation, which was actually a complication of, okay, how do I say this? Okay, this person had gallstones and then they had a test called an ERCP. I'm not gonna, do what the acronym stands for because it's like hard to say. I guess it's like slightly invasive, the imaging or like the test. And then when he got that, I think that test somehow perforated or poked a hole in his duodenum, which is a part of the small intestine. We had to go in and fix the small intestine. We started cutting at 10.30 PM and then it was gonna be a robotic case and like things were going fine. And then all of a sudden a blood vessel was nicked and we're not fully sure what it was. At first there was concern that it was a bigger blood vessel, not the aorta, but like coming, I think almost directly off the aorta. So it was like a lot of blood. That's what the initial thought was. I don't think that's what it was now. Or like, they don't think that's what it was now. They're more knowledgeable than me. Because of that, we shut the robot down, pulled it off the patient and then opened the patient up and did an open procedure, like an open surgery. So it was very dramatic and there was like a lot happening. And this is actually the first patient in my three and a half weeks of surgery that I have seen that has needed a blood transfusion. Like just like in the movies, they're like, get like, two packs of blood, oh negative, like get it down to OR6, like all of that. His vitals were stable the whole time because I kept checking from what I could see. Everything ended up fine. We closed off the blood vessel, I guess, and fixed the duodenal perforation and closed them up. They're a very complicated patient. They've had a heart transplant, like a lot going on. So this is like one less thing that they need. So I'm glad that we fixed them up. I feel like I am like a bad luck charm because I just feel like so many times that I'm in a surgery, things go wrong. Like I'm not gonna harp on it, the clip's getting long, but even in the first surgery that I was in today where we were moving part of the lung, because of lung cancer. I got to the OR and everyone was like super tense and the resident was like, okay, come with me to pathology. And apparently there was like a plaque on not the lung, but like a layer right above the lung in your chest wall. And if that plaque was cancerous, that means that the cancer is a stage four or something metastatic cancer and then they would just close the surgery and he wouldn't be eligible for surgery anymore so it was very tense we went to the pathology suite and we were like literally watching the pathologist like do all the things that they do they freeze the sample then they cut it into a hair thin layer and then put a bunch of dye on it put it on a slide look at it under the microscope it ended up not being cancer which is so great i was the first person to say hi to this patient and their family so i just was like imagine they come here the patient comes here they've like mentally prepared for this surgery and then we open them up see more cancer than we thought there was and then we have to close them and then wake them up from anesthesia from intubation from all of that just to say sorry we can't do it i just was like please please don't let it be cancer. So I'm glad that it wasn't cancer, it was benign. It is time to 
go back to sleep <laughs> it's time to go back to sleep i have more energy than i thought i would i think the shower was very rejuvenating but i definitely am gonna sleep a couple more hours because i only slept for less than four hours i would like to get my nails done today after i wake up maybe you'll see me with nice nails in the next vlog because my last hospital didn't allow nails for surgery so hope i can get them painted but I'm gonna close out the vlog. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it was kind of fun to watch. Like I know it's a lot of just me telling you what's happening instead of showing you what's happening, but if I could show you everything, I, I you know I would, you know I would. <laughs> but hopefully it's still a good watch for you. And yeah, thank you for watching. If you liked the video, please like the video. Give me a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already subscribed and I will see you in the next one. Bye!